Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Plutzinger, and in this video, I'm going to discuss thyroid symptoms as well as give you a checklist to understand the thyroid system and ultimately the number one cause behind low thyroid conditions. And yes, this video and this material is geared towards those that are dealing with low functioning thyroid. However, if you're dealing with an over-functioning thyroid or any other thyroid condition, the information is going to be very, very good and useful for you. So let's dig into the material here today. The first question I always ask, is it really a low thyroid? And the reason I ask that is because over time, when your symptoms start to stack up, okay, the quintessential symptoms of your hair is falling out and you're sluggish and your gut's not working right and you're losing energy and whatever the case may be, you know, it, it doesn't take you that long to be like, I've got to check in with my doctor on this. And so when you bring these quintessential symptoms to your doctor, it doesn't take the best doctor in the world, the one that graduated with the highest grades and the best medical school to understand that if you're coming in with these symptoms, Hmm, it may be a thyroid. So what happens then is you're going to go through the diagnostic process of, low, you know, finding out if it's a low thyroid. So the reason I like to start with these is because the key component behind hypothyroid symptoms or so dealing with a low thyroid is sluggishness. So think of any body system. If it's working slow, it's not working properly. If your hair is falling out, you're not producing hair. If you have constipation, your gut is working slow. If you have brain fog or you're tired, your brain's not working fast. You see what that, how that looks? So anything sluggish is going to be a representation on the surface that, hmm, I might have a low functioning thyroid. So again, with that, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the diagnostic process. Hey, doctor, I am dealing with A, B, C, and D. Well, let's evaluate you. So in this type of situation, everybody that goes into the doctor is going to get a physical exam. On top of that physical exam, if we're dealing with a thyroid, we're going to palpate the thyroid and understand if it's swollen or if there's lumps, and that would yield an ultrasound. But everybody that's dealing with a low thyroid and you get into this system of care, you're going to be sent to the lab to get some blood tests. Those blood tests are going to come back and they're going to reveal if your TSH is in or out of range. So as you go through this, if there's more tests that need to be done, you just continue to get tests done. So exam after lab after test after exam after lab after test. And that's how this merry-go-round goes with the standard of care. Ultimately, what is the thyroid gland? The thyroid gland is your metabolic governor. And so what does that mean? It means that it controls all your metabolic processes. Again, if you have constipation or brain fog or anything that's working slow, it's a sluggish metabolism. The, meta the, the thyroid is involved to me in three things. It helps pr the body produce energy. It helps the body get rid of toxins. And it also allows the body to create building blocks and or repair blocks. So like I said, it's the metabolic governor. It's really that easy. It's a primitive and primal hormone to the body and it's needed for proper metabolic functions. The system looks like this. In the brain, there's two uh, glands. There's a hypothalamus and there's a pituitary. And these collect feedback from the body. They get all of the feedback and understanding exactly what's happening in the body to start to regulate what's going to happen with the hormone output. So the pituitary gland right here is specific to, I mean, amongst other things, uh, creating and spitting out thyroid stimulating hormone. Now that TSH, that will act on the thyroid. The thyroid in the neck is going to produce T4 and some T3. But the T3 is the hormone that actually acts and primitively and primally can actually get through the cell wall. It's only one of the very few hormones that can do that. It can get through the cell wall and get through to the nucleus of the cell and act upon the DNA. And that's what stimulates our metabolic processes. So T4 will convert into T3 and T3 will unbind itself into free T3 and act upon the cell. What happens with these hormones, specifically T4 then, is if there's enough circulating in the body or if there's too much or there's too little, that feedback is relayed back to the hypothalamus and the pituitary to regulate how much stimulating hormone is produced. 
So what happens here is that in the traditional setting, typically you're only being run TSH, maybe T4, and a few others. So when I talk about being uncomprehensively diagnosed, misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed, and incomprehensively managed, that's where this situation is coming in. Because if you look at this right here, there's 10 markers to the thyroid system. There's 10 markers and literally only two, maybe three are run on a continual basis. So how do you get the whole understanding of exactly what's happening with the thyroid system if you're not getting a, a picture of all 10 markers, so you're not evaluating them and you're not analyzing them? The second thing here is that reference range. So if you look at a lab, on the right side of the lab, when you look at the paper, you're gonna have all the values. So you've get, you, you, get your, you get your element, you get the marker, so what your element tested at, and then you get the reference range. Now, if there's 40 or 60,000 people that do the same test from the same lab than you, what's gonna happen is simple math. You're gonna get 60,000 people, you're gonna get an average of that marker. So TSH, you're gonna get an average. Then you're gonna get a bell curve. You're gonna have standard deviation number one and a standard deviation number two. And that is what's called your reference range. But that doesn't mean that something is functioning correctly because functional ranges are very studied ranges on that specific marker to understand exactly what does it mean and what is it doing. So when you look at TSH, the reference range can be between 0.35 and 0.5, but the optimal range, according to the American Endocrine Society, is 1.8 to 3.0. And there's a lot of other literature that wants to demonstrate that you want a functioning thyroid stimulating hormone at 2.0 to 1.0. So we wanna be in a functional range versus a reference range, but we're diagnosed, treated, and managed on these reference ranges. Okay, take the medication, all oh, great, you're in range, away you go, but you're still having symptoms. So this is in a, a, a diagnosis that is underdiagnosed, and this is a treatment system that can be incompletely managed. When you get those 10 markers, there's 20 different patterns within those markers. So if there's 20 different patterns, there's different things that can be going on and not just representative of a low TSH. There can be overconversion of the hormone. There can be underconversion of the hormone. There can be resistance at the cellular level. There could be problems in your brain at the pituitary level. So we don't know what could be going on if we don't run all 10 markers. Not to mention that there's other numerous conditions, metabolic disorders, metabolic issues that can mimic that of a thyroid problem. But we only look for one to two markers. That's all that happens. And you go in this merry-go-round of evaluation, things look fine, pin it on another symptom, come back, let's adjust your medication. It just becomes this cycle. So when you look at this, number one, there's undiagnosed patterns. If we're not running all 10 markers and you're not understanding what those 10 markers are doing, the, possib the possibilities, we want to turn possibilities into probabilities, you're not getting a full comprehensive diagnosis, okay? Number two, there's many disorders that mimic a low thyroid. So it's not just one thing and let's just keep tracking after the TSH. There could be other things that are going on that are flying under the radar because we just automatically assume that it's a low thyroid. But the number one cause for low thyroid in the United States, over 90% of those diagnosed with hypothyroidism are dealing with an underlying autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's. And if you've never heard of it, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition where your immune system is aggressively attacking the tissue of your thyroid gland. And we'll get into Hashimoto's specifically on another video, but I wanted to tell you that this is, the, this is the most common undiagnosed reason why we have a low functioning thyroid. It flies under our radar because there's no treatment for it in the medical model. So we just wanna bully the TSH numbers. And we are getting smarter because more and more people that are coming into my thyroid programs are showing that they're either, you know, having uh, uh, Hashimoto's or they're not. So it's being run, the cat's out of the bag, 
five years ago it was much different. Nobody knew that they had Hashimoto's and they're wondering why they were feeling so awful. But when you find this and you can fix it and you can get it better. But the problem is, is that most people are dealing with Hashimoto's. Not everyone, but most people are dealing with Hashimoto's. We either, they either know now or they don't. But if they know and they're being treated for thyroid, treating thyroid and treating Hashimoto's are in two different stratospheres. They're two different conditions. But yet if we just continue to treat the thyroid and we have underlying Hashimoto's, there is a, there's a big answer right there to why you're not feeling better. Normal labs and still symptoms. So I'm gonna check out of this video right now and uh, my name is Dr. Josh Blessinger. I look forward to seeing you. If you're looking into getting this checked, hop on a 15 minute call with me and we'll, we'll take a look to see if these things are being missed and ultimately how we would go about finding out the true diagnosis and the true uh, underlying situations that might be causing your condition. I'll talk to you soon.